السلام علیکم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ٹو لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی دس لیکچر وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ دا بایولوجیکل کلاسیفیکیشن سو آؤٹ لائنس وی ول ڈسکس بایولوجیکل کلاسیفیکیشن پرپز آف کلاسیفیکیشن ہائرارکل کلاسیفیکیشن لائن ہائرارکی اینڈ ایگزامپلس what will be the lecture outcome so by watching and listening to this lecture student will know about biological classification what is the purpose of biological classification what is linear and hierarchy and many things other classification so the traditional definition of classification is like the grouping of objects into classes owing to their shared position of attributes mean objects grouped on the basis they are uh, basis of their shared characteristics as car classification yeah any ordering of vast diversity of nature or of any part of it into such groups is called classification or nature is diverse so when you order them into groups uh, by classifying them uh, keeping in mind certain uh, shared characteristics is called classification or classification is the way in which living organisms are divided into groups on the basis of similarities and differences so what we do in zoology or botany or in biology we classify living things keeping in mind their similarities and differences so similar organisms are grouped into similar categories and different are groups to different categories purpose of classification a classification is the following objective number one why we classify things to store data for information store store of data or information when we classify things we store them we store their data and their information so for example if we classify dog as a carnivore as a vertebrate so it's an information it directly comes into our mind that this organism belong to this phyla for example you like needle like leaves as the characteristic of coniferous forests or coniferous trees so when we classify things into different categories we store this data and we use it as information source then recovery of data or information and at a time of need we can recover the data we can recall the data we can recall that information and for identification to identify the vast diversity that right? this is vertebrate this is invertebrate this belong to mammalia this belong to uh, like uh, aves this belong to pisces this belong to reptiles etc also to predict uh, uh, the state of unrecorded features for example uh, if we classify an animal as vertebrate we can predict many features from this only one word that for example if an organism is uh, placed in phylum vertebrata so we predict many characteristics right from this uh, from from here that uh, this animal has a vertebral column it has a notochord it has a gill slit it has a post anal tail and many features we can record them and uh, conclusion on phylogeny so by classifying organism we can construct the phylogeny we can conclude a phylogeny that to what uh, line to what phylogeny certain animals they belong or certain organism they belong uh, explanation of the diversity of animals and it's also explain the diversity of animals what is hierarchy so hierarchy uh, a system of persons or things ranked one above the other is called hierarchy it's a system of like uh, like from uh, from bottom to the top or from top to the bottom so upward hierarchy or downward hierarchy so hierarchy is actually the uh, the ranks or like in army we have like 10 ranks started from 
la second lieutenant and lieutenant and then to the captain and major and so on and so on and so on to the general so this is hierarchy like in the university we have like uh, lecturer then we have assistant professor associate professor and professor and we also another hierarchy of the like uh, the, the staff like from the pn to the vc so these these, these are the hierarchical system so samson in 1965 defined hierarchy as a system of framework a systematic framework for zoological classification so in zoological hierarchy what we do we classify animals with a sequence of classes or sets at different levels in which each class except the lowest include one or more subordinate classes so why the lowest do not include any class because lowest category is the subspecies or species category so further there is no class and subspecies there is no group and subspecies but subspecies are subordinated to the species species are subordinated to the genera and genera are subordinated into families and families are subordinated into orders orders into classes and classes into phyla and phyla into kingdom and kingdom into a domain so this this is how hierarchy works uh, then what is hierarchical classification so it's a system of ranks that indicate a category categorical level of each taxon mean it provide a rank to a taxon for example mammalia so mammalia as a class so class provide to the taxon mammalia a level a rank now we know where class lies like for example we uh, domain kingdom phylum and class so we know the level of the class the rank of the taxon so from this classification we know that where this taxon mammalia lies and or natural ranking of species according to their comprehensiveness and a hierarchy of nested categories so as a or natural ranking of species we nest uh, categories like for example we nest many species into single genus or many genera into one family many families are nested into order one order many orders are nested into Uh, uh, class and then so on and so on. So when related species are grouped into uh, uh, genus, jab, when we have like uh, for example we we have related species, we group them into a genus. Then these related genera are grouped into a family, and related families are grouped into orders, and so on up to the kingdom or domain. So this is called hierarchy, and the process is called hierarchy. a hierarchy classification so hierarchy is constructed by subordinating lower categories to the higher category within the animal kingdom higher categories and regular use is file and the lowest species now we know that the highest category is domain and the lowest is subspecies or species but like in regular use phylum is the high category and species is the lowest category so species is the lowest category so it is subordinated to genus now it is subordinated to genus because species is lower than genus and then genus is subordinated to family because family is larger and genus is smaller one so it is subordinated to the family and so on up to the uh, like um, uh, domain level for example the species of dog like animals of the genus canis are grouped with one Uh, with other uh, canids like genera for example vulpes now canis and vulpes are related genera for example all dog dog like animals are uh, grouped together into genus canis and there are uh, certain allied members which are grouped into vulpes now all canis and vulpes canis is a genus vulpes is a genus so these two genera are further Group, they both have canine teeth so they are then grouped into or subordinated to a family named canidae and then canidae and also all other carnivores like felidae and mustelidae they are these three families are then subordinated to an order that is carnivora like for example we have species canis familiaris not the, the the common dog 
then we have Canis lupus, the, J J the wolf, Canis aureus, the common jackal. So we group all these because they are dog-like animals to a genus Canis. And then Vulpus vulpus, we group this uh, into Vulpus, genus Vulpus. Now Canis and Vulpus, they both have canine teeth. That's why we group them or subordinate them to a family Canary. And then there is another uh, family Felady and another family Mustelady. So now all these families have a common characteristics. And what is that? That all of these are carnivore animals. So that's why we group these three into another single order which is known as carnivora. So what we do? Like we subordinate the lower category to the higher category. Now these three are uh, subordinated to this one, two are subordinated to the one, three are again subordinated to this one and so on and so on. Um, here in this picture you can see these uh, African wild dogs, raccoon dogs, dingo, weasels, ferret, bad girls, tigers, lion, jaguar, uh, uh, bobcat, aardwolf and brown hyena, uh, mongoose and many other these skunks, uh, these mustelids, all wolf, coyotes, fox, jackals, all brown bears, polar bears, these all are grouped into like uh, uh, the one uh, uh, group that is carnivora because all of them they eat flesh and like uh, there are two forms. One is the, uh, the dog like uh, carnivores and the cat like carnivores. So these are cat like carnivores, the panthera, cheetah the leopard, the jaguar, the lion, the tiger, the bobcat, hyena, so uh, merkeet, mang mongoose, these are all actually they all uh, are cat uh, uh, like carnivores. So they are grouped into filiforms. And these are dog like like wolf, coyotes, black bear, wolverine, otters, bedgars, ferret, weasels, or skunks, all these raccoons, red panda, all these are actually dog-like so they are grouped into this canary like they have canine and felines so and then both are carnivore that's why we group them into carnivora and the carnivora is into mammalia what is lenine hierarchy so the hierarchy uh, which was constructed by Linnaeus is called lenine hierarchy uh, Linnaeus uh, was the first who proposed hierarchy while giving the hierarchy classification its idea and its concept, he used uh, at that time he used uh, basic uh, five categories for plants and animals known to him, and these five categories were classes uh, and Latin classes or order, ordo, genus, species, and varieties. Uh, now we know them subspecies. So when the number of known animals and plants increased to uh, Two additional is not T O S T W O. Two additional categories uh, become obligatory, which is family between genus and order, and phylum between class and kingdom. So the varieties used by Linnaeus are infraspecific variants was eventually and replaced by subspecies. So thus any given species will be categorized into seven obligatory categories, which are for example, if we classify wolf, so the seven obligatory categories will be kingdom, animalia, the second will be phylum, chordata, the third will be class, mammalia, it's for wolf, but the categories are here, these are the categories and these are the taxons. So order carnivora and the family canidae belong to genus canis and species lupus, so canis lupus. So these are the seven obligatory categories, that is from species, genus, family, order, class, phylum and kingdom. So these are seven basic categories of classification. So when required, we can use other categories by suffixing uh, or prefixing. So using prefixes or suffixes. So these prefixes are used to split categories for the formation of constructing of additional categories. So thus there are super orders and sub orders. So if we use sub or super, we can split a family into three like super family family and sub family okay order sub order or super order etc 
the most frequent and reached the new categories um, especially used in entomology because uh, as we discussed in the previous lecture that uh, like insect uh, uh, com uh, composed by almost 70% of the animal kingdom uh, as the term tribe we use there because uh, because of the huge variety of the huge number between it uh, the tribe is used between genus and family uh, another is quart the category uh, some paleontologists use it between order and classes uh, some other use a term for additional subdivisions like uh, clades lego and sector are also used by some authors some also use infra class below sub class and infra order below sub order so there are as many as 33 categories which are used normally in hierarchy classification and but generally there are 18 accepted categories Kingdom, phylum, subphylum, superclass, class, subclass, quad, superorder, order, suborder, and then superfamily, which normally ends with O I D A E, OID, and then family, which is I D, I D A E, ends with I D, and subfamily, which ends with I N E. And tribe, which normally ends with any, and the genus, and subgenus, super species, or and species, and then subspecies. So sometimes, like we introduce uh, like infra order. So after suborder, infra order. After subfamily, there is um, infra family, or infra genus, or infra class. So, and standardized endings uh, uh, in zoology for the name of tribe, subfamilies, families, and superfamilies are uh, indicated in parentheses. So, for, for tribes, subfamilies, families, and superfamilies, like OID, ID, INE, ANE. So, standardized ending ends above family level have not been adoptive in zoology. The bracket indicates that the category superspecies is used in only some branches of zoology like ornithology because of the too much adopted radiations. Generally, this uh, same categories are accepted in botany, but standardized anything are generally different. And higher, what are higher categories? So a higher category is a class into which are placed all categories that are ranked in the same level in hierarchy classification. So the higher the category selected for a given taxon indicates its rank in hierarchy. Species category is defined by testing isolating mechanism. That is reproductive isolation. What is states testing isolating mean? They are reproductive isolated. It gives us singularity, distinctiveness, and differences. Higher categories are arbitrary and used for grouping and emphasizing and ordering by affinities among groups of species. So the, compa the comp uh, comparative data is used for delimitation of the higher categories while interbreeding is the criteria used for ranking at species level. So the species is the relational concept in its relative where as higher categories are not scientific, uh, scientific interpretation of higher categories was first given by Darwin in 1859. So according to him, the nature system is genealogical in its arrangement like pedigree but the degree of modification through which groups have undergone should be expressed by ranking them under different categories so called genera subfamilies sections order and classes these are the references uh, thank you so much if you guys have any question please ask